human-induced climate warming affects the entire world. This means more extreme weather may hit the UK in the future. I asked people on the streets of Manchester what they think could be done about climate change and what they do to prevent it. Do you guys ever do anything at home? Do you take the bus? Do you recycle? Do you do that kind of thing and think about it consciously? It's uh, once in a blue moon for me yeah. personally. I don't. Not a daily thing. It's difficult to uh, to integrate it all into modern life. I think uh, it's not catered for. I don't think as well as it should be. Um, so it's difficult, but I think everyone tries. You know, I think like more like natural energy should be used. Like there's plenty of hills to build windmills. You know. Yeah, we always recycle. Yeah, we recycle. Um, the council where we live uh, are very good on that, so we recycle quite a lot of stuff. Um, Try and use my bike wherever possible for travelling, so cut down emissions that way. So what changes might we see in the UK in the future because of climate warming? Well, predominantly getting the um, summer heat waves and, and the drying in the southeast of, of England, but also potentially wetter episodes in the summer as well. Um, ironically, um, you could, for the next few decades, get more cold winter spells as well because of some changes in the Arctic that are linked with jet stream changes that can become more unstable in the winter and sometimes bring colder air masses further south over the UK. You do get on occasion very infrequently these large events which have quite catastrophic influences on the ecosystem. For example a really large flood might cause widespread erosion within the river channel um, and wipe out most habitats you know and that provides a chance for new species to be able to colonise. Similarly a large uh, prolonged drought might cause widespread mortality um, and change the ecosystem in that manner. These events do occur by their nature quite infrequently and the ecosystem has time to respond. If they start to occur more frequently, these catastrophic changes, um, and there isn't that period of response and recovery, then we are likely to get fundamental changes in the ecosystem. One of the major influences on climate is an increase in the greenhouse gas emissions such as carbon dioxide. This is partly to do with the burning of fossil fuels. But we are also cutting down trees, which naturally take in the carbon dioxide. 15% of carbon released in the environment is due to deforestation and land use change. This leaves more greenhouse gases in the atmosphere to trap the sun's rays, heating up our world. So the, the reason that we know, that scientists know that this effect is uh, human-induced is th that they're faster than anything that's happened um, in the past and also the, on the, the longer time scale changes in the past, the glacial interglacial cycles, the temperature changed and then um, the greenhouse gas concentrations followed. Scientists know that from looking at archives in ice cores, whereas the changes that are happening now are that the greenhouse gas concentrations are leading the temperature changes, so the greenhouse gas, gas concentrations have increased and then the temperature has followed. One of the main problems for the UK's future is sea level rise. The main reason at the moment that sea level is rising is because of uh, basically the seawater naturally expands as it gets warmer. This is about half of the sea level rise is due to this effect. So this is a basic physical um, relation. Um, the other reasons is extra uh, melting of ice and snow masses, particularly from the um, um, glaciers, um, especially the Greenland ice sheet. Well, sea level is going to go up by a few tens of centimetres to maybe a metre or more during the rest of this century. So obviously the low-lying coastal areas are vulnerable, more vulnerable to um, extreme tidal events, flooding and storm surges affecting those areas and parts of the east of England that are below sea level or around about sea level. So they could potentially very seriously be affected by even half a metre rise in sea level. Carbon budgets are ways in which governments measure carbon emissions. They are the quantity of carbon dioxide humans can emit and still limit warming to 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. I talked to Professor Kevin Anderson about how the UK government is tackling our carbon budget. So the UK has two sets of carbon targets, if you like. It has its domestic ones that it's going to meet by law in accordance with the Climate Change Act. And it's set, also signed up to all sorts of international agreements, the Copenhagen Agreement, the Doha in Cancun and so forth, where the UK says that it will make its fair contribution. And it is failing on those abysmally. We are choosing to not meet them as a government, as a society, as a democratic society. We collectively as a country are, are choosing to, to fail on these targets. So every year we fail on climate change. The following year gets much, much harder. 
And I think that's a real problem that government struggled with. It's always thought we can relieve these problems to the future. But the problem is we only have a certain amount of carbon that we're allowed to emit. It's a bit like having a bank balance and a certain amount of money in it. If you spend it all up front, there's nothing to spend in the future. In reply, Amber Rudd MP said, Climate change is one of the most serious threats facing our world, and that's why the UK will be pushing for a strong global deal in Paris later this year. We are clear that moving to a low-carbon economy is key for our long-term economic and environmental prosperity. And as a one-nation government on the side of consumers, the hard-working families and businesses across the country, we are determined to do so as cost-effectively as possible. As a nation, we are beginning to bring climate change to the forefront of our thinking. We understand the global issues such as extreme weather, climate migrants and ecosystem destruction, but with 4 to 6 degrees Celsius warming, the UK's future is also affected.